In this lesson, we're going to continue our investigation into standard deviation. In the previous lesson, we defined what standard deviation was. Uh, so let me just review that really quickly. If we looked at two different classes, so if you have your study guides out, this is what we did in the previous lesson. We had two different classes, and they actually had the same average. What you'll see here is that class B is much more scattered, and class A is much more uh, clustered together. So to explain standard deviation, um, <clears throat> a low standard deviation means that most data values are close to the mean. So, if, so class A would have a lower standard deviation because everything's closer to the average, whereas class B would have a higher standard deviation because it's more scattered. So that's kind of the definition of standard deviation. So a high standard deviation would have most data data values are far from the mean. Now we looked at last day or in the last lesson, I should say. Uh, is how to calculate standard deviation, actual value of standard deviation by hand. Uh, you can look at that lesson if you'd like to. So we looked at how to do that for class A and for class B. Um, so we got a standard deviation for class A of 5.36 and a standard deviation for class B, which is more scattered, of a much higher value, 20.14. Now what we're going to look at in this particular lesson is how can I calculate standard deviation with technology. Um, what I'm going to be using for my technology is a TI-83 calculator. There's probably, you can probably Google standard deviation calculators and that will come up as well and you could do an online version. Um, we're going to look at how to use a calculator to calculate this 5.36 standard deviation. If you have your study guide, the next page here shows you screenshots of everything you should see. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to take Mr. Martin's uh, class A, so all of these marks, right here and calculate the standard deviation of 5.36. So the first thing you want to do is turn on your calculator and I'll go back down to the description here and as it says here it says press stat. Since this is a statistics topic you want to press the stat button which is right here. So press stat. You're going to want to practice along with me as well as maybe pause this video as you go. So press stat and we want to edit a new list. So press 1 or enter. And if there's previous information there, it says previous information, press up and down arrows to highlight the list heading. So I'm going to press up so that list one is highlighted. And if I want to clear that, I'm just going to press clear and then enter. Again, there's online versions of standard deviation calculators as well. So we've cleared it. The next thing to do is input all the data values. So all those test scores are going to go into list one. So those test scores again were 71, 71. So I'm just hitting enter after everyone. I'll go back up here to remind myself. <clears throat> uh, there's a 72, a 78, 72, 78, 71, 71, uh, 65, 67, 62, and 78. So I've got my list. So the next step, if you go into your study guide or if you look here, uh, what it says, once data values are entered, press stat again. They don't disappear, you can't break the calculator, so press stat again. It's going to a new part. And we would like to calculate something. So I'm going to just move this calculator here. And on the top of the next page, it says, press the right arrow once to display calculate menu. So we're going to calculate something, so I'm going to press the right arrow here. Here's calculate. And press enter one to select one variable statistics. So we'd like to calculate something to do with one variable statistics. So I'm just going to hit enter, and here's what I see, one variable statistics. Um, Next it says press second, then one. Here's, what we, here's the reason why. In this calculator it says L1, or list one, right above the number one. And we put all those statistics into list one. So if I wanna, if I wanna find the statistics on list one, I press second, and then one, and you'll see L1 up here. Uh, then press enter. We want one variable statistics on list one, hit enter, and a whole bunch of stats come out. And the most important ones are these two right here. The X bar is 70.5, that's the mean, as you can see here also in the study guide. And your mean and standard deviation are the X bar is the mean, and this funny sign here with an X is the standard deviation. So the mean is 70.5 and the standard deviation is 5.36, which we had already previously calculated by hand, but this was a lot easier. Um, so that's the way to calculate standard deviation using a piece of uh, technology. One thing that does come up in addition to this is what if we have a lot of data? It would not be fun, let's say we had 2,000 people that we had collected data on, it would not be fun to write in 2,000 different pieces of data value and calculate the standard deviation. That would take a really long time. So what we do is we sort the information. So I'm going to show you an example of here how to do that. We can sort the information and use graphing calculators to shorten our work. So here's an example. 
Angel conducted a survey to determine the number of hours per week that her grade 11 class plays video games. She organized her results. That's what we're doing in this frequency table. So she found that five students play between zero and two hours of uh, video games. She found that one student played between two and four hours, none between four and six, four between six and eight hours, etc., etc. So one way you could do this is if we want to represent all five of these students who play between 0 and 2, we could enter, we take the average of the interval, so in between 0 and 2 is 1, you could put the numbers 1, 1, 1, 1 to represent all five students. And you could put in the number 3 here. To represent these four students, you could put in 7, 7, 7, 7. To represent these six students, you could put in 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, etc., etc. And that's a way you could do it. But you can see that that would be difficult if you had a lot of data. So there's a way of using two lists in order to do that. And I'll show you right now with the graphing calculator. So very similarly, you go into stat. So that's what I'm going to do. So press stat and edit. And we want to clear this list. So clear any previous information, hit clear and enter. And we can use this as two columns. So what I'm going to put in my first column on my calculator is the average of all the intervals. So I'm going to put the numbers 1, 3, 5. So right in the middle of all these intervals, because I can't put in multiple numbers. So that should be 13 and 15. So I'm going to put all those numbers into the first column here. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. So there we go. And in the second column, what you can do now is put the frequencies beside each of those average data values. So if you look here, <clears throat> sorry, uh, my computer's freezing on me a little bit right now. There we go. Uh, so if you look here, I can put all of these frequencies next to those average data values. So 5104, so five people played an average of one, one had an average of three, zero, four, 6922, 6922. So you can see how sorting that information and doing it this way may be easier. Now the only thing is, <clears throat> it says represent the data values from the frequency label on a time plot. So we had five students on this one, one on this one, four here. Sorry, this is just a side note. Um, <clears throat> we'll get back to the question in a second. So there's the data value. What we're doing right now is part B, using technology to determine the mean and standard deviation. So I put those in. We want to go back to, and you could look at your previous um, page, go back to stat, and we'd still like to calculate one variable statistics. But what we have done is we put information in list one and list two. So to enter list one, I'm going to press second and one. Then we need to put in a comma, okay? And then I want to put in list two, because we have a frequency and a mid middle of the interval. So I'm on variable statistics on list one and list two in this case. Hit enter, and I get the same answers. I have that my mean <clears throat> is, it looks like I have wrong answers uh, in the study guide. My mean is 8.45. So not 5.45, it should say 8.45. And my standard deviation is 4.17. So the standard deviation is correct. Uh, so there we go. So again, things to remember if you'd like to copy this into your study guide, this is the very end of the study guide here, is that if you're doing large sets of data and it's organized, in list one you put the data values in the middle of the intervals, in list two you put how, how frequent each of those intervals happened, and then we calculate one variable stats on list one and list two, and we can find the standard deviation and the mean. If it's a small number of data, you can just put everything into list one, every piece of data.